Welcome to EC Electronics. In this video, we are going to see the previous year questions of ISR Technical Assistant Examination. And we'll be seeing the questions which have been asked in the 2016 ISRO Technical Assistant Exam. Okay, so let's see what are the questions. With 0 volt on both inputs, an op amp ideally should have an output of dash. So, there are certain options given. Option A equal to positive supply voltage. B equal to negative supply voltage, C equal to 0 and D equal to CMR. We know that OPAM is an operational amplifier. So an operational amplifier consists of two input terminals that is the positive and the negative. That is non-inverting terminal and inverting terminal. Okay, And there is an output. So let the input applied on the uh, positive terminal or the non-inverting terminal be B1. And let the output on the next terminal be V2. And let A be the gain of the op-amp. And V out be the, or V0 be the output of the op-amp. Then the V out is given as V out equal to A into V1 minus V2. So this is a case for the output of an ideal op-amp. Or in the ideal case, it would be the output. Now here it is given that both the inputs are 0. Okay, so there is a 0 volt on bus first input and 0 volt on the second input terminal. Then what will be the output? Means equal to A into 0 minus 0 equal to 0 into A equal to 0 will be the output in the ideal case. So from the options, which will be the correct answer? The correct answer for this question is option C, which is equal to 0. Now let's see what is the second question. C programs are converted into machine language by dash. Option A, an editor. Option B, a compiler. Option C, an operating system. Option D, none of these. So this is uh, related to the programming. Now we know that uh, there are certain tools in the uh, C programming applications or the, uh, the IDEs or integrated development environment. There is an editor, there is a compiler, debugger, etc. Now, from these options, which one converts the C programs? We know that C programs are high level languages, which is not in the machine understandable form. The machine understandable language is called machine language or it is in the form of 1, 0, 1, zeros. That is 1s and zeros are only understandable for the machines or the computer hardware. So, in order to convert this high level language, which is a human understandable form, we know that the C programs are like in... C, it is a something like that. That format is understandable to humans. So it has to be converted into the machine understandable form, right? And which of these options will convert the high level programs to the machine language format? Is it an editor? No, it is not an editor because in the editor, in the editor window, we are going to type and edit the programming code. So that is not an editor. Now, a compiler, yes, a compiler is a uh, is a part of the program which converts the high level C programs into the machine understandable ones and zeros or the machine language. Okay, so the correct answer is option B. Now, what is an operating system? Operating system is the operating system is actually the uh, linkage between the hardware and the software. So, in order to connect the hardware and the software, we need an operating system. So, it is actually the core of the system which will control all these operations. It is the operating system. Now, the correct answer is option B, that is a compiler. The next question is, which of the following is an active element? Option A, voltage source. Option B, current source. Option C, both. Option D, none of these. This is a question from network analysis or in general network session. So we have already discussed in our previous videos that what is an active element, what is a passive element. An element which is able to generate power by itself is called an active element. For example, transistors are active elements whereas resistors are passive elements because they are not able to generate powers, they are only able to consume powers. Okay, so that is the difference between an active element and a passive element. Now let us look into the option. What are uh, the active elements given in the option? A, voltage source. Yes, from the name itself, it is clear that it is some source. So here it is a voltage source. It is generating some 
power or some energy. Now, B current source, yes, it is also generating some energy. So, these two are active elements. So, the option here is, the option C is both, right? So, this A and B are active elements. So, for that case, the correct answer for this question is option C, that is both A and B. So, here both means both A and B. So, the correct answer for this question is both A and B or the option C is your answer. Now, the next question is, a P injection act as a dash. Option A, control switch. Option B, bidirectional switch. Option C, unidirectional switch. And option D, none of this. We have already discussed in the video of P injection diode that the P injection will be conducting the current only in one direction and it reverse and in the reverse direction it blocks the current so it is a what type of a switch that is only in the case of a one direction it will be conducting and in the other direction it will be blocking or it will be cutting off the current right that is in the reverse reverse direction so in the forward bias condition it will conduct and the reverse bias condition it will not conduct so it is a what type of a switch it is a unidirectional switch that is it allows current to pass only in one direction and this principle we are using in the rectifiers okay so that is the answer for this question is option c unidirectional switch a semiconductor has dash temperature coefficient of resistance this is one of the very common questions which have been seen in all of the exams which are related to electronics any of the exam related to electronics so a semiconductor is having what temperature coefficient of resistance option a positive option b zero c negative d none of this we know that when the temperature of a semiconductor crystal is increased from t equal to zero kelvin what happens is that the electrons in the covalent bond will try to break the bond and will have a tendency to be free so this process will generate free carriers or free electrons in the crystal structure and hence the conductivity increases or in reverse we can say the resistance decreases. So when temperature is increased the resistance has decreased so it is having a what type of resistance that is negative temperature coefficient of resistance. So here the semiconductor has Dash temperature coefficient of resistance means it is having a negative temperature coefficient of resistance. The answer is option C. Now, which of the following sets of logic gates are designated as universal gates? We know that there are certain universal gates in, uh, in the gate family. So that means from by using these gates, that is a universal gate, we can construct any gates. That is called the universal gate. So the options are A, nor NAND, B, XOR, nor NAND, option C, OR, NOT, AND, option D, XNOR and NAND. The universal logic gates are NOR and NAND because they can be used to realize any of the gates or any of the logic. So the correct answer for this question is option A, that is NOR and NAND. The next question is, in 8051 microcontroller, the register that holds the bits TI and RI is dash, S mod, S con, P con, none of this. So these are some of the control registers of 8051. And which of these registers is having these two bits? So these are some of the bit addressable registers of 8051. So uh, the first one is a small register that is used to, to set the serial modes there is modes in serial communication s code is serial communication control register or serial control register p con is power control register and d none of this so which of these registers is having ti and ri means it is s con register so it is a 8 bit register and the bits of the s con registers are sm0 sm1 sm to then receive enable TB8, RB8, then 
ti and ri so it is starting from 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so it is consist of how many number of bits it is having a 8 bit so uh, let us see what are these uh, bits indicating sm0 and sm1 is used to select the modes of serial communication sm2 is used for multi processor serial communication ren is used to enable or disable the reception the tb8 and rb8 is used for storing the ninth bit for tb8 it is for the case of transmission that is out of the transmitted data the ninth bit is stored in tb8 and the ninth bit in, uh, uh, of received data the transmitted data is stored in tb8 and the received data is stored in rb8 and ti is uh, interrupt flag for transmission and ri is the interrupt flag for reception these two flags are set by hardware and it is cleared by software so if you see this this is a s con register or serial control register and this is having these two bits so the correct answer for this question is option b that is s con register now the next question which of the following memories uses one transistor and one capacitor as memory unit this is a very basic question options are a s ram b d ram c both b none so uh, if you see the structure of a d ram there is a word line or a bit line here there is a pass transistor then there is a capacitor so this is the basic cell structure of a DRAM so this is a pass transistor this is a capacitor and this is the word line now the words are being uh, written on uh, also right from the uh, capacitor and it is stored in the form of charge and this pass transistor act as a switch which connects this capacitor to this word line. So if you see this basic structure you can understand that the DRAM consists of a pass transistor or a transistor and a capacitor. So the correct answer for this question is option B that is DRAM which is having a transistor and a capacitor in its basic cell structure. These are the questions which I have included in this video. We will be seeing in the next part of the ISRO technical assistant exam preparation videos. We will be discussing the previous year questions and my opinion is that if you are preparing for technical assistant post then you should do maximum number of previous year questions because they are only asking the basic uh, things related to electronics. So you need to uh, have a concept of from which all areas the questions are coming and which all are the previous year questions which have been repeated and what type of questions are being asked. So please do practice more and more previous year questions and I'll try to do maximum number of previous year questions in the upcoming videos and I really hope you found this video useful for your preparation. We are also doing videos for ISRO scientist post. UPSC, PSC and also for RRB preparations. So if you are preparing for any of this exam, please do subscribe to the channel and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like this video and also share this video with your friends who are preparing for the same exams. Thank you.